Looking to secure API routes, there are a whole load of different ways that you can do it. And in this series, we've looked at a few. We've looked at the X API header. This is where each request sends a header with a secret key in it that we check and verify. Now, the problem with that is anyone who inspects the request is going to see that header and potentially intercept it in route. Next, we looked at passing the username and password using basic HTTP auth. If we do this over the HTTPS protocol, that's pretty secure, but there's still problems maybe having to look up the user every time on the database. Every time we get a request, we're having to ping the database to verify the username and password. In this video, we want to look at a method that is potentially faster and more secure, certainly allows us to be able to send requests in reliable ways. We're going to look at JSON web tokens. JWTs or JOTs, all the same thing, depending on who you are. What JOTs allow us to do is they allow after the initial username password exchange, we're able to verify that user and return the token. The token is split into three parts, separated by periods, full stops if you're in the UK, and the three sections determine different things. The first section is telling us about the type of encryption that was used to be able to generate the signature, which is the third section. The second section is the payload, and this is readable by anyone. So we should make sure that anything that's in here is not necessarily um, secure or sensitive, but is useful for us and the use of our application. And the last part is the signature. The signature is um, generated using our password that we set secretly on our server and the payload. So when someone sends back the JWT with, with subsequent requests, we're able to check if we were to encode the payload with our secret password, does it match the signature? And if it does, we can trust the payload. We append it to our requests as part of the user, and then we can use that data without querying the database. So we get the same security, but we also reduce the load on our database. Let's dive in and see how we do that with our Fastify server. So this is a project that we started work on in the earlier videos. We currently have two methods of authentication, our X API, where we're checking the API key against something we're storing in as an environment variable, and our basic auth, where we're splitting off, checking the username and password, and we're comparing it against our database model. To help us with JOT, we're going to use a third-party library. So the library we're going to use is Fastify JWT. So I'll npm install at Fastify slash JWT. Now I'm going to need to provide a route for my user to get their token. So in my roots login, I'm going to add a, another root here called fastify.post on a login. And what we want to be able to do is check the username and password. If the username and password is valid, then we will give them back a token. So let's see how we might do that. I'll do it in line. I'll create an async function, which is going to have the request and the reply. So we want to check the password and username. If valid, we want to um, encode or sign the token, which we'll return. Alrighty. Now the username and password logic we've actually already done inside of our other auth middleware. So I'm just gonna grab that and steal it. So we said find by email and get the password and then we'll be able to say if the username's not there, it's not found. If the password's matched, not matched, we'll send a 401. Otherwise, we will um, move on. Okay, so let's grab this whole try catch block. And paste in here. Awesome. Get rid of the keyword function. Fix that. So we want to get the user. We haven't in, in, imported our user model. So let's do that. So const user equals require our models and our user model. Um, get the user by email. Where are we getting the email? Well, we're getting it from the body this time. 
So we will say const um, email and password are coming in from the body. So request.body. Then if there's not a user, we will say user not found. Um, if then we'll compare the password. If there's a match, then if there's not a match, we'll say 401. If there is a match, we want to get our token ready. So to get the token, we need to use Fastify JWT. So we're going to need to go back. We'll go back to our app and we'll, and we'll register that plugin. We'll say fastify.register. What do we want to register? Well, we want to register our at Fastify JWT. And we want to set a secret password. This is what we'll use to encode our payload. So this should be an environment variable, really. So let's do that process.env. Uh, jot signing secret. So let's go create that secret in our end file. Say, yeah, well, let's generate a UUID and paste in there. Make it slightly more secure than we have before. So now that we have added that middleware, we can generate this token. We can say the token equals uh, fastify dot jwt that'll now be part of our um part of our fastify object we want to sign and then we pass in the payload we want to sign we can decide what this payload is um so what we might say is our payload is going to be our user maybe our email um now we only selected the password, so we might need some other details back from our user that we might want to have. So I think we had role and we had um, first name and last name. And we'll put emails fine, that's coming from the payload, but first name is coming from our user, user.firstname, and last name is coming from our user as well. So last name, oops, and role coming from user dot role. Okay. So last but not least, so if it's valid, we've, si we've signed a token. And last but not least, we'll return our token. So we'll do um, reply dot send our token. Let's restart our server. And let's pull up an API client. We use Bruno, which is an open source API client. And let's create a login route. And let's see, if we can create a new user just so that we can set this up. So we'll create a new user. We'll say email is um, Kevin, um, Kevin at test.com. Name, first name. Oh, it's gonna be Kevin. Last name, Cunningham, role, I think it had team member. So let's try to do that. No authorization header. Okay. We're using basic auth, so I'm just going to remove that for now. Try again. Um, password is required. Whoops. Password. Password. Team member is not a valid E number for role. Let's go check why. Da, da, da. Yeah, our user model. I think it probably should be. So let's just um, fix that. And we get back what we wanted. We've got our username, our password, and we're ready to go. So Kevin at test.com and our password is password. So let's try again. Whew. Kevin at test.com. Brilliant, an error code occurred. Let's see if we got anything more helpful out here. It says invalid select, select only takes one argument. Amazing. Um, so that was because of this. I think I need to pass this in as an array if I want multiple arguments. Let's try that now. Woo, right, I get this token back. But actually, it probably should be nicer if it was slightly different. So it would be nicer if it was in brackets like that. Awesome. 
I got this token. Yay. So if I now go to, so this token, you can see it's separated by period. So this is the bit that tells me the encryption. This is my payload, which is actually just base64 encoded. So I should be able to decode that anywhere. So let's just check. Base64 decode. Whack it in here. Now I'm able to get all that information back out again. So there's nothing, there's nothing secure about that. What is secure is that this secret here, or the signature here, was generated using this header, using this payload, and my secret key. So only I on my server can validate this. Whew, okay, so we've done our login route. We've we've um, we've checked username and password. We've validated and then signed the token, and we've returned that to our user. Now we need to use it. Oh man, we're doing well though. Let's use it. So I'm going to um, a folder called plugins, and I'm going to call this my Jot plugin. So Jot plugin dot js. And to create this plugin, I'm going to use um, Fastify's um, plugin module, um, which is just called Fastify plugin. So I'll npm install Fastify plugin. And at the top of this, I will um, create plugin. And I'll explain for in a minute why I'm doing this. And I'll module.exports from this file an FP wrapped function, which gets Fastify options. And if I want it, I've got access to done. Actually, I want to do this asynchronously. So, second time I've done that. Um, so I'm going to make this an async function instead. Alrighty. Now, the reason I've done this is that I've got access to the Fastify instance now. So I can decorate it, which means I can add extra functionality to it, which I'm going to do. So what I'll do is I will um, register inside of here my um, Fastify plugin. So let me go back and um, where I was doing that over here. Let me, oops, let me grab this and bring that inside of here. So rather than doing that separate, I'm going to have my own plugin that's going to do this work and it'll register, it'll register that as normal. And then it's going to do something else. It's going to do fastify.decorate. And I'm going to call it authentic, I'll call it jot auth. Uh, I'll call it jot auth, I'll do in camel case. And effectively, what that's going to allow me to do is somewhere else in my function, somewhere else in my application, I can do fastify.jotauth, and it'll give me access to this function. So I do async function, uh, request reply. And what do I want to do? I want to verify the signature. And there's actually something I can do that really quickly with, which is really nice. So I would do try, await, request. And what this has given me is access to this function called jot verify. And what that will do is it will validate the token. If the token is valid, it will append to my user or my request the payload. So use request.user will be the payload from my token. Um, if it's not valid, we'll have an error. I won't be able to send a reply of status uh, 401 and a message of and uh will send with a, a message saying unauthorized. This is more idiomatic for Fastify. Uh, we are wrapping it in Fastify plugin. We've got this function that's got access to the Fastify object or instance. We're registering the relevant plugin. So our jot, that's going to be joined together with this jot auth and our jot auth. So now I'll register the plugin over here. So I'll say, um, Fastify.register, and I want to register my Jot plugin, which I'll need to import. Yeah. Probably should import it uh, before I register it. So now, anywhere in my application, I can use that. So let's try, try. At the moment, so at the moment, if I try to get all my users, let's use this users, then I'm going to get um, Kevin here. What we would like to do is protect this route. So let's go to our routes. 
And the handler I want to add is going to happen on request. And it's going to be fastify dot JWT off. So now I get 401 unauthorized. Okay, so I've got my 401 unauthorized. That's what I'm expecting. I've protected my route. So I'm going to need to be able to get access to this. So I need my token. So let's um, post to users slash login. Um, let's send our body again of um, uh, email kevinattest.com password password and we get our token back. So now I'll grab my token and in my auth, I'm going to set it to bearer token and paste my token in there. Now when I send this, I get the data back again. If my token's incorrect in some way, then it's going to tell me that it was unauthorized. What's often about this is I have no database in interaction. All, all that's happening is that an algorithm is running to verify that this signature matches when I encode the payload and the header with the key that I've set secretly. So someone needs to know that. So jots are a really efficient way for us to be able to protect our routes without overloading our database. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe, that'd be awesome. Um, and I'll comment below, what, where should we go next? How else do we enhance this API? We've protected the routes um, like no one's business. I'll make the code available in GitHub. I hope to see you around again soon. Thanks. Bye.